Good morning, it's Carl from Studio In Car. Today I'm going to show you around this T6.1 system. Let's go and have a look. Right, so I'm going to run you around the front end, Stu's around the back, fitting the mud flaps that we forgot to fit. Now we don't fit mud flaps, but when a job gets to a certain size and someone asks us to do uh, an extra thing, every now and again we'll agree to it. <laughs> we haven't done it yet, so I can't tell you whether it was a good idea or not. Although we will pop in on Stu and see how he's getting on. So, front end, uh, it's Melee Legend, three way. ML280, ML700, in on axis pillars. So from the driving position, they're nice and on you. Such a massive difference that makes. DRC, glass mounted, up there. It's a tiny bit trickier to see than when it's dead in front of you, but when it's up there and completely out of the way, most 99% of the time you're not using it. So. I really prefer my DRCs to be up there and uh, Nat decided that he wanted his DRC up there. And then we've got the door build. So this is this is the grill section you can see. You're probably used to me saying that now. Behind there is a stacked baffle, a completely deadened door. This one isn't a semi-sealed baffle. This one's open because the Melee Legend mid-base requires a bit more space. So um, yeah, that's in there and done. Real nice shape that. It's a little bit dark to see that one down there. We've still got the computer in there because I um, test drove this last night, took it home after sort of, you know, entry tuning yesterday. I didn't really have to do that much. Maybe just lift the base slightly for on the road, you know, standard stuff. Um, in the back, we've got a cooled amp rack, which has an Audison 5.1K and an Audison Quattro. Quattro bridged on the mid base, 5.1K running the mid range and tweeters, and the sub. For the sub, we've got a 12W7 in the sealed box, the sealed JL box. So, you can just see that edge there. That's the fan unit that we printed to go in this end. We've got another one on the other end, and this rack is there underneath the seats. That's a glass top. We've trimmed it in vinyl so it can be, you know, it can take splashes, it can get damp. Like it's, yeah, it's down there, it's in a vulnerable place, so it needed to be quite tough. Distribution is in there, and this is held down by two Allen fixings. So any fusing or anything like that, whip that off, change it, and then away we go. You can just see in here um, a banana plug set. So a set of binding posts that we put into the side panel. So when this sub box is removed, uh, which is part of the spec, it can just be unplugged and taken out and there's no sort of flying leads around the place. This sub box is on T6 screw downs and we've put threaded rivnut into the floor. So we'll go and have a look at that. And there's a lot going on around the back that... How are you getting on, Stu? Yeah, good. The mud flat man. So that's the W7 in its box there. If you can see the tie downs, uh, that's a metal bar underneath the sub box. Undo those two, undo the banana plugs from the back there, and out that comes. We've done far more in here than meets the eye. So all, all of the roof is trimmed in Alcantara, all of the beams, the pillars, of course, and then we've lined the back of the van. So this, this was just a standard sort of panel internal so the grey Volkswagen panels and then the blue paint and metal um, we've deadened and then trimmed everything in a in an anthracite carpet this wheel arch cover is a uh, is a usable box that we created so you can put your jack and everything in there and then that lid it's just hard to do one handed and that lid goes back on like that. And there's plenty of space in there for just the normal stuff you would have kicking around in the back. And then all the panels were trimmed. We've got sockets. So we've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket, USB-C, 
and USB A on the front corner of that one, and then we've got USB C and USB A on here. These things aren't really expensive, they run from ignition. You can switch them on and off if you if you prefer to, or you can just leave them to come on with ignition. So yeah, loads and loads done, although you know, as with most of our systems, on, on the skin of it, it doesn't look that busy at all, and that's what we sort of that's what we sort of prefer, you know. Um, this is OEM integration in this, so we've got the factory head unit running to the DSP, the bit one HD is underneath the driver's seat, it's on a panel, I'll throw a picture up now. Um, and also we have a direct toss link fit for this, so if I just go through into here, I'll show you. It's quite dark in here, but up there in the corner, you can just see that's a fibre optic input plug. So should you want to use a DAP, you can just plug the DAP straight in to that input, change the source on the DRC to digital input, and then away he goes. He can control the volume on his DAP, or you can control the volume on the DRC, and that'll give you a you know a higher resolution input than say the factory system. Integrated properly and de-equalized, the OEM head unit in this isn't that bad, you know, so we can get a good sound out of it. Um, yeah, that's just how it's integrated. They're the two ways that we can play into the system. And uh, yeah, sounds great. If you've got a T6 or T6.1 or T5 or any van or car, really, for that matter, give us a shout. If you want a system like this, then we're geared up for it. All right. Take it easy, guys. I'm Carl. This is Studio In Car.